Akintosh is one of the lowland distilleries, one of the few of them to survive from the early 1800s. I like to think of Akintosh Distillery as an Irish distillery in Scotland. And this is largely due to them still using the triple distilling process. They use the wash still and the spirit still, but then they add that third intermediate still. In this way they can take more of the unwanted tastes out of the whiskey. And also step up the new made spirit to 82% ABV. Akintosh is one of the few places in Scotland that triple distill their whiskey. It is much closer to the triple distilling process that they use in Ireland. An Irish whiskey made in Scotland. Well, <laughs> welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey. And uh, today we are going to go after a famous lowland, iconic lowland uh, distillery. Uh, not that far out of Glasgow. Um, Akintoshin. If you spell it out, it's a long name, Akintoshin, Akintoshin, and it, it's a Gaelic term for a uh, corner of the field. So, and what do I have here? Well, I gave a 12-year-old, uh, I've had numerous 12-year-old Akintoshins through the years, back from my son first introduced me to it, and um, I actually gave uh, what was left of one of my bottles, yeah, about half a bottle. I gave it to a friend, but I poured a little bit out because I hadn't done a review on it. And I poured it in here, thank golly, and I haven't touched it since. So there it is. So that's going to be uh, our review today, the 12th. Um, and then I'm going to follow with uh, those that complain about uh, uh, the lightness of their uh, whiskeys and that. I am going to show you uh, a heavy hitter. This is a 50% close to cask strength. Uh, it is the uh, bartender's uh, malt and then of course I have the 18 year here I do have a three wood coming uh, but anyways um, let's get going on this now I, I really have to tell you a little bit of history on this uh, distillery because because it does have history um, you can sort of think of that when it was built uh, we're going back to probably prior to 1823 and it had a, of course a different name back then um, it would be probably 18, 17, somewhere around there. Um, it, was, it was built at a time when Glasgow was growing, but it was still very much out of Glasgow. Uh, today, of course, Glasgow has become a huge city and it's grown almost around uh, the, the Clyde's uh, River there in, the, in what they call the Clyde's area there of, uh, of uh, outer Glasgow. But it goes back to 1823. Uh, it was established uh, by uh, John Bullock, but really it was established before that by John Bullock. And um, he had it uh, officially licensed, uh, I believe, one year of operation, and he was bankrupt, and he'd operated illegally for a few years prior to that under a different name. Now, um, it uh, was then taken over the following year by his son, who again got it up and running and uh, he himself ended up uh, in financial trouble and it was in 1834 that um, his, his distiller uh, John Hart and Alexander Fishy who was a local farmer uh, they purchased it and they actually successfully ran that distillery uh, good Lord, they ran it up uh, into, I think it was around uh, just the, the year they rebuilt it, 1977. Um, interesting thing is that um, uh, John Bullock, part of the deal that uh, John Bullock made with, uh, with Hart and Fishy was that he could, he could live rent-free on the distillery property. And uh, that was, a, that was a, a pretty smart investment for him because uh, he lived to the ripe old age of 87. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, this, so what had happened was, uh, uh, in 1877, they had a, a disastrous uh, uh, a crop, and it forced um, the family, the, the, the fishy uh, family, to, to sell after all those years, uh, 44 years of uh, running that, uh, that uh, operation, they had to sell. And then, of course, it was uh, sold to... Uh, to uh, a fellow by the name of C.H. Curtis, 
Um, they ran it up into the around 1903, and then it gets kind of um, well. Let's put it so it goes through numerous owners, and so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna plague you with that history. You can read about it if you want, but but what we saw in that time, of course, of, in the Clydemont Bank area where it was located, it grew, and right up into the Second World War, where uh, we have now uh, the Blitzkrieg, and um, they were quite concerned because of the shipyards, the big shipyards uh, in, in Clyde Bank. And um, so what they did to fool the German bombers at night is they uh, tarped an area to look like the river and with, with you know, uh, setting up props and lights. Uh, they were able to fool the bombers into thinking the river was where it wasn't. The unfortunate thing is it bombed that whole area, it destroyed everything, but I think it was seven properties. A thousand people were killed in, 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 in the Blitzkrieg bombing, but the distillery was uh, saved. Akintosh was saved. It survived it, but the warehouse got hit, and there was, uh, and there was bombs around the warehouse, and um, they lost a uh, huge amount of, uh, uh, of whiskey uh, in, in that uh, bombing. Uh, but, um, you know, they, uh, they got it up and running after the war. And, of course, um, it, it, it had, again, uh, several owners, but it gets interesting because um, what happened was uh, they eventually sold to a guy by the name of Eddie Carnes. Eddie Carnes it was um, an interesting fellow, and they, he looked at the whiskey and that, and he thought we should be looking at... Uh, single malt. So this became one of the first single malts. We know Glenfiddich was probably the, the first one to really get out there and market it, but Akintoshin was there as well. So uh, it has quite a history with its single malts. Um, and then of course uh, Eddie Carnes, he sells it, I think it was 1984, uh, to Stanley Beaumont, of course, uh, who uh, I've done, uh, I've done a, a numerous uh, reviews on, on, on uh, some of the, the Stanley Beaumont, uh, Stanley um, P. Morrison whiskeys and that with Beaumont. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, we have uh, Morrison and Company there as well that uh, uh, produce uh, several different uh, whiskeys through the years. Of course, they've all been more or less bought out. Uh, uh, we're, we're, I believe it's uh, Beam Suntry today. Uh, but um, at that time, um, Morrison Bowmore uh, did, uh, after it was rebuilt originally uh, by, um, I'm pretty sure Eddie Kearns rebuilt it, and then of course uh, Bowmore did a lot of uh, renovating. The, 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 the big thing is that the, th this was a, a successful uh, distillery, and, and they kept putting money into it, but didn't radically change it. So anyways, uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, what's unique about the distillery is the triple distillation. And uh, it's a process that is uh, used a, a lot more in um, Ireland than it's, it's, it's used here in, in, in the Scottish distilleries. Uh, it, in fact, uh, Akintosh claimed to be the only truly triple distilled. I believe Springbank, uh, it, it's a double and a half distillation on some of their on some of their whiskeys, and there's a few other distilleries that do that. But it is a lot like Irish whiskey. In fact, uh, it, there's a few of the reviewers, and I think Ralphie mentions it's really an Irish whiskey. I'm going to say it's Scotch. It's just they triple distill, like a lot of the earlier distilleries, uh, you know, did actually triple distill. And it just happens to be one of the few distilleries today that is still triple distilling. So the process of triple distilling, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but uh, basically how it works is uh, the... Uh, and I, uh, Make it as simple as possible. You know, you have your, you have of course your your mash tun, like all all the uh, Scott distilleries have, and then of course you go into your washbacks, and then when they're getting into the copper stills, most of the uh, most of your Scotch distilleries have both the wash still and of course the spirit still. 
But what they do with uh, Akintosh is they have an intermediate still. And the idea between uh, getting from the wash still to the intermediate is to step up the proof. So it allows them to be able to get more of the impurities and give it a more refined uh, spirit. Now, obviously there's a reason for double distilling. So uh, we're trying to get fusel oil, all these impurities out that uh, some of them are toxic and some of them are, 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 are an unwanted taste in the whiskey. And uh, some people uh, criticize triple distillation and they say it takes a lot of the taste and flavor out of it. And they talk more about the, the copper conversation with the whiskey to purify it. And there's, you know, there's there are obviously two schools of thought because the Irish are still doing a lot of triple distillation. So uh, I'm not going to get into the actual process. We'll say that uh, you know that uh, where uh, you, you're uh, looking at the fates uh, being uh, redistilled and all that stuff. Uh, there's uh, places like Springbank, and that's what they'll do. They'll they'll recycle it through through the distillation process again, where they basically take that, step it up, uh, remove the both ends of the uh, of the whiskey step it up and and uh, they basically get it up to a bit around 80 81 percent ABV so that's quite a bit higher than what you see with normal scotch and um, this this is interesting because uh, when we look at Akintosh and, and I did Bladnock which is another lowland uh, distillery and it's sort of a reason I kind of set things up here here's yellow spot and yellow spot is also um, you know, triple distilled, um, and I'm going to say that it's probably closer to Akintosh than this one here, Glen Goyne, which is not that far from uh, Akintosh. And, you know, it's uh, uh, one of the distilleries fairly close to it. So, so there is a uniqueness to this whiskey, and um, you are either going to be an Akintosh follower or you're going to not really care for it. But it is a very light whiskey. So we're going to start with the 12 and then we'll move on through the other whiskeys uh, in later reviews. Um, this, You know the story behind this? I explained it. <laughs> it's why it's in this bottle. This is the 12 year old expression. And we will pour it. And there it is. And I save these bottles for that reason. I also give them as gifts. I have a fairly good whiskey uh, supply there, and I like to give them as gifts, Christmas, and uh, special occasions. Okay, we'll give this a little, let's give it a little bit of a uh, twirl there first, and I can uh, show the camera if I'm successful this time. See if this does have any legs. Now this is, I think, 40% if I remember rightly, so I'm not expecting a lot of legs on this. Maybe this will help a little bit. And there we are. Okay. So uh, the nose first. Akintoshin, 12 year old. My understanding is 80% uh, uh, bourbon casks, uh, refills, and I believe 20% uh, Oloroso uh, first fill. So very light again, uh, but there is there is a decent nose on it. Lots of sweetness. Um, I'm getting um, uh, toffee. I'm getting some citrus notes. Honey and citrus. And I am getting, uh, I, it's a nice mix because I'm getting a bit of uh, fudge, citrus, honey, and um, there's a little aromatic stuff going on here. Uh, I'm going to say we probably are getting, uh, uh, because it is a lighter nose here, uh, the citrus is dominating, but uh, in the background, uh, they, I'm going to see possibly there is some spice stuff going on here, but it's more the uh, baking spices. A bit of cereal notes here. I'm getting the malt and the cereal coming through here. So 
I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on the nosing of this here. Um, this, because we'll be doing the others, and they do have some similar nosing. Um, I do want to take another look at the legs on this here. I don't always look at the legs, but there's actually legs on here. And, uh, yeah, there is legs on there. I don't, I don't know if the camera caught them, so there is some legs on there. Um, let's give it a pellet. So much. Light, but sweet, citrusy, and um, boy, I'm getting a little bit of orange and chocolate here. Slight bit of the sherry notes coming through. Um, not a sherry bomb. <laughs> it's a lighter. It's a lighter presentation. But um, honey, a uh, bit of the, again, a bit of the uh, chocolate orange stuff going on here. Cereal, malt, and, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say um, we're getting a bit of, uh, definitely bake, the baking spices are in there. And it's a mix. And I'm going to say possibly some, uh, some of the ginger, ginger notes coming through here. But um, it's, it's a very light, presentable drink. And um, I do notice there is a lot of reviewers that say that there's not a lot here. I, I think in, in, the, um, in the palate of the masses, the, the drink scotch, this is an excellent whiskey to introduce to people who have not drank scotch. And for the snobbery out there that criticize Akintosh, and, and, and I, I'm going to be very cautious on that one um, because I read so many reviews where we, get, uh, we, we do get some snooty comments. Um, I look at it this way. It's an employer in the, in, the, in the scotch business that keeps a lot of people employed. Um, I agree with Ralphie and, uh, you, know, uh, the, uh, you know, the four, uh, the four dummies, um, you know, a lot of the other reviewers, uh, Jeff, uh, that uh, are critical about the 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 uh, not the the filtering through whiskey. I, I I think it's something we all would like to see. Kind of um, is it necessary? And you can you can't you present a whiskey that is not filtered? And so I go along with those criticisms. Adding coloring, well, we're just fooling the public. We're saying it's been in the cast longer than it is. Some people, some of the companies will say it's that you can try to get a consistency, but come on, every whiskey is different. So if it's if, if it doesn't have a lot of color, that's fine. If it does have color, great. It, what it does, it distinguishes what is pulling out of the cask. So I, I agree with that. But to to um, you know to put a whiskey down because it is light. It has uh, got a very light presentation uh, due to a process that's been around for uh, hundreds of years, a couple hundred years. Um, I'm having a hard time with that one. So uh, this, is, th this is history, it's Scotch history, it history in that, which has been doing this for a long time. Uh, it's done in Ireland. It was done by a lot of Scottish distilleries. Uh, I'm not going to say pros or cons in terms of what I like. I like to have a variety of, of presentations. I've always been that way and I'm very open-minded to it. So this is a player in, 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 in my, my, on my shelf. And um, um, is it my favorite whiskey? It doesn't have to be. It's a player on my shelf, okay? So let's uh, get into the finish now, okay? There is definitely some body here for a triple distill. Get up early in the morning, have a shot of this, chew it, and tell me that there is no body to it. You know, I'm <laughs> this is an early day uh, review, and I'm telling you right now, there is body to this. Uh, it's 40%. Uh, some people will like 40%. 
I'm not going to be critical on that. I'm more critical on the um, other things I mentioned. So uh, I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, it has uh, actually not a bad finish at 40%, a, a, an exceptional finish. So um, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with that. Um, I'm going to say uh, it is probably going to duplicate in the finish a lot of what I mentioned in the um, it, it, on the palette earlier that it, it, it does retain the cereal notes. Uh, I'm not tasting a lot of it's 12 years. I'm not tasting a lot of the wood, but of course we do take the sharpness of the wood out with trip distillation. Uh, but I do taste a lot of the sweetness. It is a it is a sweeter drink. It's actually a very good drink to introduce to um, people that have not drank a lot of scotch. You know, they, they might really like this stuff. Um, I would say that uh, I've had people say that, you know, you're, 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 you're comparing this to uh, a Glenlivet, a 40 or 43 Glenlivet, um, but it, it is a little more refined process. And maybe that is a good uh, comparison if you're looking at a variety of different whiskeys that you want to present to people that are that are just getting into to scotches. But also you can be drinking scotch for a while and still enjoy this once in a while. Um, I do. So uh, I can go from a... Uh, and I, I bring these whiskeys out purposely. I can go from a 24-year-old 24, 24 whiskey like this that's a mixture of Macallans and... and, and uh, and Highland Park, etc. I can go. I can go from that, and it's cast strength. I can go from that, and I can um, I can pop into a uh, an eighteen year old Glen Goyne. Here you are. I can do that. Um, these are these these are these are higher strengths, and enjoy them. Or I can take a 40, 12 year old forty, Auchentosh, and I can enjoy it. Um, do I give this a really high mark? Not a super high mark. Uh, I don't give it a super low mark. I give this one here a mark in the low 80s. I give it probably an 82 uh, because it is an 82. It's it's an 82 presentation. Uh, not bad uh, considering the price. It's a good price on this whiskey. Uh, I will I will uh, give you the price on it. It's been a while since I paid for a 12 year old Akintosh, and I got to remember what I paid. I used to buy them. Uh, uh, years ago on that and then the last one was a gift so I'm not sure what they paid for it so I'll have to look that one up and I will I will give you the price on it I do know it's within uh, within grasp uh, but um, overall a good whiskey I really think that it is a great uh, starter whiskey and it's also something I can go back to once in a while and say I can appreciate it so there you are uh, that's the 12 year old review for uh, the Akintoshin um, I'm going to say um, drink wisely, drink intelligently, do not drink and drive. Until the next time, so much.